Okay, in this video I'm going to wire the contactor up to this on-off switch here. Um, I'll zoom into the different components and just talk about them for a little while now. I'm not sure if I've bought the right circuit breaker. This is a 16 uh, amp breaker. Uh, um, this is the first contactor that I bought um, and it has two normally open uh, channels and two normally closed and for what I'm using this for I can still use this but a few days ago I got a little bit worried that I might have bought the wrong one and bought a second one which has all normally uh, open uh, channels going through so I think I might actually just use this one Uh, for what I'm going to be doing, I only need the normally open. Um, at least this way around, I can put my live and neutral wire through uh, two normally open, plus the wire that will go to uh, the on and off switch. Um, in this, with this particular switch, I would only have the live going through, and the um, neutral would come around this so I don't know if that's necessarily the right thing to do so the thing to mention about the switch um, is it has one set of normally uh, open which is this side here the brown one and one set of normally closed contacts as well as the contacts for the light which is this thing here not sure how good this is this section of the controller will be where the main source of 240 volt power enters the enclosure and is sent via the contactor to the variable frequency drive and the power supply units. As I have not wired a contactor up before, I drew up some reference diagrams from sources I found online. There seemed to be slight variations, but the main similarity was the on switch should be normally open, meaning its two terminals are only connected when the button is pressed, and the off switch is normally closed which means the two terminals are connected until the button is pressed, breaking the connection. I will reference all these sources in the description below. I am going to test as much of this build before placing things into an enclosure. I am making a test board with a terminal to feed power from and a place to mount the switch and contactor unit. Um, I'm going to plug it in see what happens. I think I've wired it correctly. That's almost the exciting bit. Definitely not wired it in correctly. Okay, here goes the second attempt. Okay, this is the third iteration of the wiring. I'm now using a third reference source. Um, I haven't wired the what will be the light inside this particular switch. Now I'm going to plug it in and see if it works. So that tripped. So I'm obviously running into problems with the contactor either remaining on or tripping the circuit breaker. Eventually Nathan, who I share the studio with, popped down and noticed I had a 110 volt coil on the contactor. Got a bit stuck because it didn't seem to be doing what I thought it would be doing. Um, and it's turned out that the coil requires 110 volts as opposed to 220, which is what I'm supplying it with. Um, I only noticed this because Nathan came down from Opentronics and asked me why I was taking so long to do this and he had a look and uh, there you go. 
he suggested I could swap the front panel out with the 220 volt coal on the other contactor. You should really check his channel out, he actually knows what he's doing. After doing this I was still having problems, and a quick check with the voltmeter revealed a surprising problem with the on off switch itself. Okay, that says NO there, normally open, which means these two terminals should not be connected, but they are. This says NC, normally closed, which means these should be connected, and they're not. In the same way the contactor unit has modular parts which could be swapped, so does this switch. But before anyone starts complaining about cheap Chinese parts, these components are designed to be fixed by a person. You are not designed out of the component, which is why it's easy to make such a mistake. Maybe the assembler had a hangover as well. Often items for western markets are made so the users can't even open let alone fix them. And in any case, if everything worked perfectly, how would any of us learn? I could take it apart and rewire it, but instead I'm going to just swap the connection so I can finally check my wiring. Off switch. Should have a contact. The on switch. Should not. So I think the rule is with whatever components you buy, especially if they're second hand or on eBay, um, just go over them with the voltmeter to check that they've been assembled correctly. So I've wired the light on the actual switch into the L1 and L2 terminals which go to live and neutral. Um, I then have a live wire coming to the normally open um, terminal at the end of this unit uh, and it comes out to, really this should be red, um, to the off switch which should be normally closed um, and then carries on going through the switch to A1 which is the entrance terminal to the coil um, and then A2 goes directly back to uh, neutral this isn't going to look like it makes much sense from your perspective so the on switch which is normally open has a wire coming in from live and then going from the next terminal along back to the fourth normally open terminal at the bottom side of the contactor. So that creates a latching circuit, I think it's described. When I know what I'm actually doing, and I'm confident that the circuit's correct, um, I'll tin these and I'll put crimps on them and do it properly. looking at these lights here, these LEDs. Oh, fuck for that, it turns on. So the last thing I've done is put this circuit breaker in between the live coming in and going to the switch. So if that is off, pressing the buttons does nothing. However, I've wired the light ahead of the uh, contactor unit, so 
at least I know there's power coming in to the unit. Now if I turn that on and press the button, the contactor activates. So I'm getting another switch sent to me, but the main thing is I know how this is going to be wired into the enclosure. I cut slots in some trunk in to make cable tracks for a mock-up panel mount. It's going to be a really tight fit with little room to upgrade, so I have to think about this a little more carefully. In the next video I will either work a little more on the layout, and I have an idea about a modular control box, or I may test another component such as the controller, which I have yet to turn on. When I began designing the CNC machine, I wanted to use proximity sensors to measure the minimum and maximum distance between the X and Y axis, so it would be prudent to work that out before putting things in an enclosure. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you.